Hi, this is Jim Bergman for TrueTac Tools. Today I want to take a little bit of time and go over the BlueVac and the BlueVac LTE. The BlueVac has been one of the most popular vacuum gauges we've ever sold and we have a lot of customers that get questions over the BlueVac and sometimes it becomes a love-hate relationship simply because they can't figure out why they can't hold a good vacuum either on the BlueVac or on the system that they're evacuating. So I want to take a few minutes today and show you how to properly test a BlueVac gauge how to make sure that your system is not leaking, a little bit about what leak decay rate is and how that works, and then show you some of the common problems that we see in the field and how to resolve them. So I've got the two blue vacs sitting side by side, and you can see essentially they look the same aside from the buttons, and they pretty much are identical uh, as far as sensor technology goes uh, and the display. It's just uh, productivity features that are in the blue vac that aren't in the blue vac LTE. And those productivity features are simply things like the ability to program the gauge and tell it at what vacuum level you want the gauge to alarm at so you can hear it and come over and uh, do your decay test. Um, the Blue Vac original also has a tenth of a micron resolution and you go, why in the heck would you ever want a tenth of a micron resolution? Well, it, it's simply to see how quickly uh, you're losing vacuum or how quickly you're gaining vacuum on the system. It's uh, again, a productivity feature just to, and it's got sort of a cool factor to it. And the other thing that, uh, that the BlueVac original has that the LTE doesn't is a leak rate indicator. And the leak rate indicator simply shows you how quickly the vacuum is starting to decay. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some basics of what we see as far as problems go and how to hook this gauge up. And then uh, show you how some of the productivity features work. Alright, one of the most important things to remember is that everything leaks. Our core tools leak, our hoses leak, and even the copper tubing that we braze together and put on the system leaks. But what we're concerned with really is the leak rate. It's how fast are we losing that vacuum. And what we want to do is want to minimize the leak rate at all times, especially when performing an evacuation, so that it doesn't drive us absolutely crazy. And in order to minimize the leak rate, there's a couple of key things that we always recommend whenever you buy a blue vac gauge, or any vacuum gauge for that matter. You want to make sure, first of all, that you get yourself a vacuum rated core tool. A vacuum rated core tool is actually much better than a standard core replacement tool. That's what a lot of you guys are probably using right now for evacuation if you're using core tools. A standard core tool is not rated for evacuation. It's actually designed to work under pressure. So when you remove the cores to try and speed up the vacuum, you actually are adding a component in there that leaks. A vacuum rated core tool is specifically designed for vacuum and tested in vacuum to make sure that we get the ultimate vacuum or the deepest evacuation we can. The second thing it you need to use is a connector, a brass connector. The reason we use a brass connector is because brass is much less gas permeable than hoses are. Okay, you're not going to you're not going to even be able to see the leak rate through this brass. So you want to connect this to the bottom of the blue vac gauge, and then we have a way to isolate that. And the last thing is an assembly lubricant. This is Nylog. Nylog is really really good for eliminating vacuum leaks in hoses and eliminating vacuum leaks in connections. So we always use a small amount of Nylog on the hoses. And a, on the hose gaskets and a small amount of uh, night log on the connectors to make sure that our system doesn't have an, an unacceptable rate of vacuum decay. If you watched a rapid vac video, one of the first things that I always tell customers to do is to check the ultimate pull down of their vacuum pump. So you can see I have the vacuum gauge connected with the brass coupling directly to the vacuum pump and I have the two caps on here nice and tight. And we're going to go ahead and start the pump and pull down pull it down and see what its ultimate vacuum is. As soon as we pull down the pump, you'll see it's dropping extremely fast and we're down to about 38 microns. Now again, it's a blue vac so it reads in tenths, so that's not 300 microns or 200 microns. In this case it's 28.7, 28.5, 28.6. You can see now that that is not going any deeper and that's the ultimate pull down level of the pump, about 20 microns. Now I'm going to shut the pump off. When you shut the pump off, you're going to notice right away that the vacuum is rising extremely fast. This is not an issue with the blue vac. This is simply the characteristic of the pump. If you listen to your pump, you'll hear air getting drawn up backwards through your pump 
because the pump only seals when it's running. It's a, it uses a rotary vane, which requires centrifugal force in order to make the seal against the exterior of the rotor. So when you test the pump, it has to be running. And in this case here, we saw it pulled down to 20 microns, and that's where it held at. So let's start off with what I like to call our micro rig. And our micro rig is simply what we attach the vacuum gauge to so that we can isolate the hoses from the, uh, from the vacuum gauge when we are doing our decay test. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the cap off here. Now, you'll notice that everything is capped. The reason we sell our evac kit with plugs and everything else is so that you can keep things capped, clean, dry, and tight. And so I'm going to go ahead and connect the vacuum gauge, and I already have a small amount of nylog on this fitting, so I really don't need to add any more. Nylog, again, is an assembly lubricant, and we want to use enough of it to connect the, the gauge, and that is it. We don't want to put a lot of excessive nylog on there. If you get too much on there, air bubbles trapped in the nylog, in the, in the nylog will actually cause uh, your vacuum gauge to, to act erratic. So uh, too much is definitely not a good thing. You see I have a plug in here, and again that plug is to keep that nice and clean and tight. And so what we want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and hook my, my core tool up to the side. Now here's where things become important. One side of the uh, connector, the brass connector, has a Schrader core depressor in there. And then there's also a Schrader core in the side port of the core tool. So this doesn't have any nylog on it. I'm going to go ahead and put a very small amount of nylog on the end. And if you just put, this stuff's a little gummy, so it's coming out, I just have one little drop on here. And I'm just going to push that drop around the, the, face of the, the face of the core tool. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect that to my vacuum gauge. So, so we'll snug that up. You don't want to crank on stuff either. The gaskets need to, the gaskets need to make the seal. So it's just nice, finger tight, and snug. Don't put your channel locks on there and crank that on there because what will happen is you're going to bottom out the brass that holds the, uh, the gasket in there and you're going to get, again, a small leak. You can see I also keep the core tool plugged when I'm not using it. So this is the proper way of connecting everything here. Now the ball valve won't close, obviously, to the, to the, uh, to the stems out here, so I can't show you how that operates. But everything is kept nice and tight, and this is what you want your vacuum rig to look like. This end is what we're going to hook up to our equipment. Alright, so I've gone ahead and have attached this core tool and micro rig here to a uh, uh, three-quarter inch vacuum rated hose. We always want to use large diameter hoses, the largest diameter hoses we can when we're performing an evacuation because the large diameter hoses have a lot lower friction and can be about 16 times faster in evacuation than a standard quarter inch hose would. Now what I'm going to show you here, I'm going to pull down the vacuum rig, I have a plug in the end of the core tool, and this is a common mistake guys make is they want to test the core tool for tightness. Now the core tool is rated down to 20 microns, right? So you'd assume that, well, we, we pulled out to 20 microns, it's going to hold. But here's what I want to show you. When you isolate a core tool, the volume in the core tool is so tiny that we're going to see the leak in here very, very quickly. It's not that the core tool can't hold. It's simply that the volume here is so small that any, any leakage you get at all in here is very, very apparent on the blue vac. So I'm going to go ahead and start the, the, the gauge up here. You can see my vacuum is dropping very, very quickly. And we're at 400, 300. This is again tenths of a micron, so uh, it's not 3,000, but actually 300 microns. We'll let this run for just a second. We'll get down below 200 microns. Now it's also important to remember that the hoses are rated at 20 microns, but we're drawing on this hose, and the hose can also do some outgassing, and that is quite common in hoses, especially new hoses like these. The longer you use your hoses, the better the hoses will work, because what's going to happen is the rubber is going to cure, and right now, even if you can like smell rubber, if you think about that, if you can smell rubber, then the, the hose is giving off gases, and those gases have to come out of the hose before we'll be able to you know, really get down to a really deep vacuum with that hose. So we're down to 200 microns. I'm going to go ahead and isolate the core, to isolate the, uh, the core tool, shut the vacuum pump off, and what you can see here is we went from 200 up to 700 microns, and we're rising very, very rapidly. It's not a defect in the core tool or the gauge. It's simply the volume is so tiny that we can't hold it for any length of time. 
This is a very, very common thing that we'll see, and I'm going to show you when I attach this to a volume of gas, or a volume, uh, like a recovery cylinder, that the vacuum will actually hold really, really solid. So this is the only way to properly test a vacuum gauge in your vacuum rig for tightness and ultimate pull down. We have to have it on a volume, and in this case my volume is an empty recovery cylinder. Uh, you can use an empty refrigerant tank, an empty recovery cylinder, but you have to have some sort of a volume for the gauge to work on. Because if you don't have a volume, you're going to get a leak rate that looks just ridiculous, and it's actually quite acceptable. Because we're talking about, again, a gauge that's very uh, high precision that's going to show you these things. So now that I have this thing on a volume, and I have my, my gauge open, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my vacuum pump. And when I turn on my vacuum pump, we're going to go ahead and let this pull down. And then I'm going to isolate the, uh, the gauge from the tank, and I'll show you how this thing works. One of the things that I wanted to discuss was uh, the leak rate indicator and also the fact that uh, why you'd want tenth of a micron resolution. And you can see when we're looking at this gauge right here, you can see it pulling down in tenths. So we're 234.1, 233.5. And you can see at the top here, the leak rate indicator is showing where we're dropping. It's negative. So about 0.2 to 0.5 microns per second. You can see that's still coming down. Now the reason I like this tenth of a micron indication is it's simply visually a lot easier way of showing that, uh, that we're still continuing to make ground with the vacuum pump and how far down we're actually down on there. Turn the back light back on here. You can also see at the bottom of it, it has a bar scale on there. The bar scale is, is at 200, which means that we are above 200 microns on that on the graph on there. And uh, you can see uh, the battery indicator is full battery. The sound indicator is the sounds on. And then that flashing backlight the backlight indicator. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to close off this, this tank. And I just isolated my cord to I'm going to go ahead and shut off my pump. And you can see that my, my vacuum is rising very rapidly. So now what we're seeing is instead of the, the vacuum on the hose itself, we're actually seeing the vacuum level on my tank. And you can see that we went from 200 microns up to 630 microns, and that my, my leak rate is starting to slow down here. It's positive now, so we're at 0 .04, 0 .03, and it's slowing down there. But my vacuum in my tank is about 238, excuse me, 638 microns. And we'll see where that settles out at here. But uh, what this shows is, is that we would have to continue to draw this tank down until it was 500 microns or less and held there uh, before we'd want to use it for uh, recovery purposes. So this is a little bit on the leak rate indicator and how that works. You can see now we're down to, to a tenth of a micron and the leak rate is very, very acceptable here. Uh, this is exactly what we'd want it. And uh, you can see that although it's not dead zero, um, now there it goes to zero itself, that the, the leak rate is, is pretty much insignificant at this point. Again, don't forget you got an extremely high resolution gauge, so this is the kind of characteristics we want to see. It's not the fact that, uh, that the system's leaking, it's the fact that the leak rate is acceptable. And 0, 0.0 is, is actually very good, it's less than uh, a tenth of a micron per second. Okay, so it is leaking still, but it's an acceptable leak rate. Now, until we cap this off and it's all brass and copper and everything else, uh, you know, and there's no mechanical fittings in there, this is what we're going to have. It's, it's, it's very normal. So the question is, well, why haven't I seen this in my other vacuum gauge? Well, it simply didn't have the accuracy, the speed, or the resolution. And this is one of the things that you like about BlueVac. The BlueVac and the BlueVac LTE are probably one of my favorite vacuum gauges I've ever used, hands down. The important thing to remember when you're doing evacuation is it's typically not the gauge that's a problem, it's simply vacuum. Vacuum is a tricky thing to get sometimes under control. Hoses leak, core tools leak, tanks leak. Just because you think that uh, you have everything tight doesn't mean that you necessarily do. Sometimes you got to check and recheck. I've seen the couplers go bad, the core tools go bad, the hoses go bad. But I very, very rarely have seen blue backs go bad. That just doesn't happen. Uh, you have to make sure that as you're doing this, that you take the time to make sure that your connections are clean, that you use a tiny bit of nylog on things, and you really will minimize the amount of problems that you do have. One of, 
one of the other important things to remember is that, again, hoses, especially when they're new, they will outgas. So you, you might have trouble getting under two to 300 microns at first uh, until those hoses have had a little bit of time to break in. Uh, if you can smell the rubber on the hose, again, it's outgassing, and until that goes away, you won't reach your ultimate vacuum levels. It's okay, it's normal, it's the normal characteristics of the hoses. But again, it's not rocket science here, it's just a matter of making sure primarily that things are kept clean, dry, and tight. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the video. This is Jim Bergman for True Tech Tools. Thanks a lot for watching.